Hi everybody, John Cena here and welcome to FunQuest Season 4, Episode 6. And we have a returning Funkster from Season 1, when it was very different, and a brand new Funkster from about three miles down the road from me. So we could probably drop into our own language and you won't be able to understand, which would be quite interesting. So, uh, Ben, Season 1 Funkster, tell us where you're dialing in from. I'm dialing in from the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area in the good old USA. Now, normally we make existing Funksters go first, but I have a question for you. When you were on before, we were learning how to do the splits. Have you managed it? No, not yet. <laughs> no, <laughs> neither have I. Uh, Steve, where are you dialing in from? A uh, little village called Eckington, which is in Derbyshire, uh, England, Great Britain, the world. There you North go. of England. Can you do the splits? And so don't be careful because we might have to demonstrate if you say yes. I actually can't do the splits, never been able to do the splits, have no desire to do the splits. So thank you very much. No. There we go. Thank you. Now the rules are very simple. Each functor selects an icon. It may or may not reveal a question related to the icon. Each functor gets a minute to answer the question, tell a story, tell a joke. When the time's up, that's the end of the question. Each function gets five questions and you, audience, can decide who goes through to the next round. And I'll tell you how to do that at the end. The rules are very simple. No swearing, no politics, no religion. Apart from that, say what you want. Uh, ben, sorry, I was saying you can pick uh, an apple, a beach scene, a paddle border or some pencils. Well, since I grew up in upstate New York here in the USA where apples were very commonly grown and I like applesauce, let's go with apples. Apples. What can of worms have you opened recently? The can of worms that I've opened recently? Some kind of controversy. I try to be controversy free, as I mentioned uh, before recording, talking about espresso, coffee, pizza, etc. But I would say probably the biggest uh, can of worms that I've opened recently with my girlfriend. We One of the things we've done through COVID is we've uh, started our own sourdough starter and we make pizza. And we nice. tried making pizza in different ways. And the look on her face when I suggested that maybe we make a white pizza with a variety of cheeses, toast some walnuts and put some fresh basil on it. And the look on her face and the friendly argument that we got into with her trying to convince me that nuts did not belong on pizza. And <laughs> my comeback for that was, well, you have pesto. And pesto is made of pine nuts, and we put that on pizza. So why can't we have a white pizza with walnuts? And whether or not that will happen in the future, to be decided and to be continued. To be continued. Steve, do you think we should have nuts on pizza? I think you're nuts if you're having nuts on a pizza. <laughs> I mean, I, I'll accept pineapple, but nuts, no. No, uh, no pineapple. That's quite a pop, isn't it? But I would prefer nuts. No, thank you, Ben. No, thanks. No, I, I'm all, I'm, yeah. Uh... Let's move on, because I can't think of anything funny to say. Um, question one. Steve, you can pick a beach scene, a paddle border, or some pencils. I tried paddle boarding. It didn't work. I fell off. So let's try it again. Paddle boarding. Which sports person did you idolise when you were young? Um, I th the first one that flashed into my head was Daley Thompson. He Daley Thompson. Fun. Yeah, he did a bit of everything. Uh, he was amazing. He was joyful. He was happy. He was successful. And you could play him on the video games and you had to tap to make him go faster, as fast as you can. And then you had to press the other button for him to jump, to do like the triple jump or the high jump and all of that. Yep. So yeah, I felt like I was decathlon. I was helping him to win the gold medal. So yeah, decathlon. Daily, Daily Thompson. Thompson. Uh, should just know for North American people, I'm not embarrassed Ben by asking him if he knows who Daley Thompson is. Uh, he won decathlon Olympic champion. World champion, Commonwealth champion, European champion. Um, Whistled the national anthem famously on the podium in Moscow, Steve, was it? I think it was. But like I said, the most important thing was he was in a video game. And that was just in the 80s. That was just fascinating. So that was the main thing, apart from the whistling and the achievements and the gold medal, the video game was just incredible. So, yes. Yeah. Daily Thompson. Daley Thompson. I once got his book from the library and there's a photograph in the back cover. And he's stood there with his hands on his hips and all the rest of them are laid out on the floor. And I thought, how cool is that? <laughs> that is cool. Uh, ben, question two. Uh, some chess pieces, a fairground ride, some clouds, or some pencil crayons? We'll go with pencil crayons because it reminds me when it comes to drawing or artistic talent, I have none. Well, this might be related to your girlfriend. When was the last time you got condor scammed? Or well, she got condor scammed? Ooh, that's a good one. The last time we got condor scanned is... 
when she tried to convince me that there was snow outside, despite me looking at the thermostat that was, or the thermo outdoor thermometer that I had, and it was 45 degrees. I'm like, it can't be snow outside. She said, no, no, it's, it's November. You know, I'm worried about it. And she almost had me convinced, except uh, I made the decision to look out the window. And then I realized that she was trying to con a conner because I'm always doing things like that to her. Did, did your country the same as ours? It, it falls to grinds to a halt when you get a bit of snow. Is it the same as ours? Some people. You can, you can see who's grown up in snow areas. So where I grew up in snow areas, it was not unusual to drive to school through snow. I, I grew up in the country. Uh, it yeah. was not unusual to drive through snow where maybe there was six inches of snow on the ground. But I've yeah. also lived in Atlanta, Georgia, where there was a dusting and everything snowed uh, ground to a halt. Here in the Pittsburgh area, I would say people want it to grind to a halt because <laughs> at least before COVID, you could say, well, maybe they'll cancel school. But I would say 50% of the people say no big deal. And 50% of the people either say I don't drive in it or they don't have the proper tires or vehicles to drive in it. Steve, as a youth, do you remember listening to BBC Radio Sheffield for school closures of snow? Yeah, and I still do it now with my, you know, with my kids <laughs> and two kids. So, you know. Yeah, but maybe... they've got, we've, got, we've got Twitter now and Facebook and all their friends on Snapchat, whereas we didn't. Yeah, but I think the thing is, is they can't get away with it now because if it's a snow day, they just work from home because True. it's all set up by, by the schools. They can just do that. So there's no escape, snow day or not. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Kids these days, they've got it easy, aren't they? Uh, Steve, question two, a chess piece. A fairground ride or some clowns? Okay, I'm a Cub Scout leader. Tonight we're having games night and I've asked people to bring in chess. So let's go for chess. Who would you like to interview you? Who would I like to interview to interview me? I'm yeah. gonna say this feels like an interview. Um <laughs> so I just watched the video, Jonathan Ross springs to mind. Okay, Jonathan it's coming back into the 90s a little bit. Yeah. I liked him, I liked his questions, I like his style, but he's funny. I think I'd need somebody who was, I think most you know people that, that do interviews are, are funny, but he, he was interviewing Ali G. Uh, I can't remember what his real name is, but Ali G, who, who, the guy that, that plays him and some of the amazing stories. So yeah, for him to interview me, I think he'd bring out the funny stories. And I think that's what's more entertaining. Yes, you've got the poignant things of, you know, the, the car accident that I had and the survival, but the funny stories, the entertaining, people remember two, two emotions, don't they? They remember the last time they cried and the last time they laughed. I would like to be remembered by making people laugh, entertaining. So I'd need somebody who would bring that out of me in the interview. And I think Jonathan Ross would do that superbly. Jonathan Ross is the buddy. Is he still on BBC? Is he still got used to be half 11? Oh, he keeps it? changing. I think he's is on it? ITV last time. Is he? Oh. He's still got a mullet. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, ben, uh, question three. Uh, you can pick a suitcase, a parrot, some pool balls or a yolk, man carrying a yolk. I'm going to pick the parrot. And the reason I picked the parrot is a few years ago, I went through the rolfing series, which is a type of bodywork. This was when I lived in Florida. And my rolfer actually had a parrot that sometimes she would bring down into the workroom and the parrot would sit on a perch until it got too wordy and she'd have to put a towel over it to quiet the parrot up. Weight training. No, rolfing is, uh, think of it as deep tissue uh, body work, not necessarily massage, but more it focuses on fascia and right, realigning, yeah. realigning yeah. fascia. Uh, actually, the lady who invented it, Ida Rolf, uh, had a PhD in biochemistry. This was back in the early 1900s. Steve, have you heard of that? Never heard of that, so I was listening intently, but yeah. No, I'm going to go find out about that next. Uh, when was the last time you got a bargain? I think the last time I got a bargain, I think both of you will appreciate this. I think it's a when well, you get a bargain, when you get something, even if you paid the, the realistic price, if you get more out of it than you expected. And a few weeks ago, I made a purchase of a drop bar fat bike. Nice. It, and I was able to build all the, get all the components and pick the components myself. And the reason I'm calling this a bargain is because I already had a fat bike. And I knew that this was going to be a little bit better because I like drop bars better. But everything that I expected that it was going to be is even better. The trails that I've ridden are even more fun than on the other fat bike. Everything that I thought it would improve is even better. And it's literally one of those things. Every time I go for a bike ride, when I finish, I can't wait to start again. I think on the one hand, that sounds 
a little bit corny. On the other hand, I think in life, we try to overcomplicate things. And if you find simple things that make you smile and have fun, and for me, that's cycling in the woods, then I think that's a bargain. We'd take him down to Eckington, Steve. That might be the best place for drop Yeah, do it. Bike. Next time you're over, Ben, we'll take you to Eckington Woods. They have Eckington some fun Woods. there on your fat bike. Yeah, yeah, you would. I was just going to say something about uh, N plus one for bikes. This has cropped up before, Ben, with you, hasn't it? It, it has. And actually, yeah. when I purchased this, because I realized it would, after riding it a few times, I actually sold one. So even though I took into account the N plus one, I actually did an N minus one. I know that's a shock. I never thought I would do that either. And people that I've told kind of look at me aghast. People that aren't into bikes uh, or surfboards or sunglasses or anything like that. N plus one is the number of bikes that the man should own when the man currently owns one. So if a man owns two bikes, he should own three. If a man owns four pairs of sunglasses, he should own five. <laughs> Surfboard, bikes, uh, cycling shoes. Um, <laughs> uh, what else did you say? Skateboards? Skateboards, uh, watches. If you're watches. a watch, if you're a watch collector, uh, whiskey. If you if you're a whiskey connoisseur, a, a different uh, fine bottle of whiskey. There you go. M plus one. Yeah, education today. Steve, uh, question three. Uh, I hope suitcase, uh, parrot, no suitcase, pool balls or yoke carrier. I'll have the pool balls, please. Pool balls. This is an open goal for you. What have you done recently that would make a 10 year old you proud? I've written a book. I, I published it. You know, it's out there. I am an author. So I think that's always cool to say. I kind of just slip it in best selling author. Um, so that'd be the coolest thing. And that that's quite significant as well, because that talks about my childhood. It's, of course it does. It's my autobiography. But it talks about the things that I did as a child, my, my growing up, what formed me to be the person that I am. The fact of what I used to do was running. So, you know, Ben, you know, you're very much into to fitness and getting out there and doing exercise. That's what I did when I was a kid. So running was my passion. Scouting, that I'm still doing now as a cub. My cut as a cub scout, you know, my first things that I achieved, my first badges were swimming, cycling, running, and I became a world champion in triathlon, swimming, cycling, running. So my 10 year old me would be very proud of what I've achieved. What's the most uh, obscure cub badge that 10 year old Steve got? No, uh, a collector's badge, I think. Collector's it's funny. Badge. You, yeah, you, you were just talking about bikes and uh, glasses and stuff. I got my collector's badge for key rings. Uh, I had a lot of them. I took them in. I got signed off. I got a badge, collector's badge. Job really? done. Yeah. If anybody can beat collector's badge in terms of nerdiness or just <laughs> general oddballness, then we'll get you on the show. Question four. Are we on a thing, Ben? You can have some horses, uh, a couple with some boots, uh, some armour and a camera. Let's go with horses. When are you at your most content? So I think I'm most content when I'm in the woods doing some sort of movement, prefer preferably with my dogs. It's just very calming and it's a great opportunity. All of my best ideas, uh, including submitting my application to appear on Funky Thinkers, has occurred when I'm out in the woods with my dogs. So that's when I'm most content. Did you get your, I did my email to you come to your phone while you're on your bike and you thought, I better do that straight away. No, because one of the things I do when I'm out on, on the bike or running or something, I leave my phone in my car. So nice. people say, well, I tried to get, and the reason for that is, well, sometimes there's no cell coverage, but sometimes it's like, that's my time. So yeah. I, I work from home. I work online. I spend a lot of time, even before COVID, you know, on, on zoom calls and things like that. So if I'm out and I'm going to exercise, that's what I'm focusing on. So if I'm running with a friend or biking with a friend, or I'm with my dogs or just alone, that's my time. So the phone, whether it's email, whether it's listening to music, and we could go down, you probably add that to your politics uh, and religion thing, listening to music while exercising outside just drives me up the wall, especially if there's no, if, if you're not using headphones, so I have to hear it. Steve, do you, do you take music when you go out running? Uh, only if I need it. And what I mean by that is I'm motivated to go out and that's great and fresh air, exercise, I'm all about that. But on those days, when I'm really, really struggling and I know I need to go for a run, I say, OK, Steve, you can listen to music. And that really helps me because, you know, you, you play the right music. When I'm out there, you know, I don't I don't really like it as much. I do prefer to go out without music, but it's needs must. I always talk about don't lean on your excuses. And, and some people come up with so many excuses about not doing exercise. So put a raincoat on, play some music, whatever it takes and do that exercise. So, yeah, needs must. And I have to I have to ask Steve, is it headphones for the music or do you blare it so everybody else gets to hear it? 
Oh my goodness, headphones. Yeah. Okay. Oh. See, I don't have a problem with people doing that, but what seems to be common in this area is you're in the woods, you're running, you're walking, you're biking, you come around the corner and there's somebody not with a boom box, like we all remember, but you know, maybe they're using the speaker on their phone and that just drives me up the wall. Yeah, no, that, that's not called for. That's not right. One, because it's not fair on the other people, but two, this is my music. I'd be quite embarrassed. Other people <laughs> listening to my music. I don't want to go into that. Um, no, but yeah, there's a different taste for different people. Uh, Steve, question four, I think, are we on? Some boots, a couple with some boots, some armour and a, a man looking through a camera. Uh, the boots in the snow, because that was me and my girlfriend this morning. Boots in the snow. Uh, what is your dream job? So I've had an eclectic life with jobs. I started out, my first job was working down the coal pits of Yorkshire uh, as a mechanical engineer, maintenance fitter, fixing machines. I've moved, I, I traveled around the world. So I was picking fruit. I was working in bars. I've worked in construction, in health and safety for nine years. That was not a, an ideal job because when you turn up on site as a health and safety inspector, you are the most hated person there. You, you, you can clear a construction site so easily. You know, whose tools are these? No, no not mine. Because <laughs> now, as a professional speaker, I'm, I'm welcomed in. People expect me in. They give me a cup of tea. They ask me how I am. And to do my job, to empower, to motivate, to inspire people, it, it is a, a, a massively dream job. But never say never. You never know what's around the corner. At the moment, I keep doing what I'm doing. You absolutely don't at the moment. Uh, question five, then uh, a pile of tyres, a pink rose, an umbrella or uh, some carrots? Let's go with carrots. What is the worst movie you ever saw? Oh, I was actually thinking of potential questions yesterday when I was in the woods and I wondered if this would there would be a movie question because I know last time I was on there was a movie question about the best movie I saw. Mm -hmm. So the worst movie I've ever seen, I think it's a tie for any of your listeners, I encourage you spend a weekend, get these two movies and watch them the two worst movies I've ever seen are over the top, starring Sylvester Stallone where he is a truck driver, who is an arm wrestling competitor where he enters an arm wrestling competition to win money to I believe if I remember correctly to gain um, custody of his child it's been in a nasty divorce so that would be movie number one movie number two is Big Trouble in Little China starring Kurt Russell and it was, so, it. I've, it was heard of it, I've heard of it but i can't remember about it Tell well I, I would encourage you to set up a poll with your listeners and say <laughs> you know watch both of these movies and vote which one of them is worse I, I think those are the two that by far stick in my mind as the worst movies of all time for me well we'll move on from worst movies but big, i've heard of big trouble in little china i haven't heard of the other one maybe there's a reason why that is i don't know uh, question five steve you can pick some some tires uh, a rose or an umbrella some umbrellas i'll go for the english rose please rose what do you do on the beach i went to Cromer this year with oh, my family nice. it really wasn't sunbathing weather uh oh. you had to keep moving you had to keep you go for a swim obviously then you come back you can't sunbathe because you're just shivering you're just like oh so you've got to keep moving i remember the story like a couple of years ago as uh, there was my girlfriend my two kids her two kids we went swimming and then we came out and it started raining and we only had one tent to change in, to change out of our wet gear. So to keep warm, we started playing cricket as you do. And so now you've got this picture of a very typical British family playing cricket on the beach while it's raining. <laughs> and we didn't think anything of it until we got back to the car and people just like applauding and going, oh, well done for playing cricket. We were just trying to keep warm, but I guess that's a British thing as well. So yes, whatever it takes to keep warm, I guess is the answer. I have a question for Ben who might have an angle on this. The thing about going for a run on the beach is you can only run one way and then you've got to run back. How can we make that more interesting? The way to make it more interesting is run down close to the water where it's nice and firm. And then when you run back the other direction, move about 25 or 30 feet farther up on the shore. So you're running through deep sand. I remember doing one of my, I think it was my third triathlon ever in the outer banks of North Carolina. And part of the run was on a beach. And rather than running you down close to the uh, surf where the sand was hard packed, they ran us way up near the, uh, 
near the grasses. And I still remember it was a 5k run. This was maybe 800 yards, uh, somewhere around 800 meters for, for you British in deep sand. And I remember it being one of the hardest things I've ever done because you sank in literally above your shoes and you had to pick your legs up, which were already tired. So to make it more interesting, since I think hard things are often interesting, even though they're maybe what be, is defined as type two fun, uh, I would say run in deep sand. Excellent. We'll give that a try next time we're at Scarborough or um, Cromer or Skegness or something like that. So uh, who won? Well, I don't know. Some very interesting answers there. We talked about surfboards and wine and pizza and Cromer and cricket and all sorts of things. So one of these gents is going through to the quarterfinals and you can decide who. And it's very simple. You go to this, find this episode page on funkythinkers.com. Leave a comment with who you want to vote for. Uh, must be on funkythinkers.com. Do not vote on Spreaker or iHeartRadio or YouTube or any of those other things that you might be listening to us on. It must be on funkythinkers.com and we'll see one of you gents in the quarterfinals. Steve, how can we buy your book and buy all your, watch all your videos and stuff like that? Okay, just type in Steve Judge into social media. You should find me. I should come near the top. Uh, if not, I do have a website. So you can tap in www.steve-judge.co.uk. Uh, if you want to connect with me, that'd be great. LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'm out there. YouTube. Find me. Let's have a chat. That's how you do it. Fantastic. Uh, ben, how can we uh, find out you about you, listen to your podcast, etc.? Easiest way to find me is Google F-I-T-L-A-B-P-G-H, FitLab P-G-H. That will throw, throw up probably the first three pages, different links to, to my social media things. If you're listening or you only want to go one thing because there's so many social media channels out there, I encourage you to check out Instagram because every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, usually with my Labradors, we do a one minute movement tip lifestyle hack promoting the ethos that movement is a lifestyle, not just an activity. Fantastic. Gents, thank you so much for being on. We could probably talk for hours about bikes and other kind of stuff, but thank you so much for being on and we'll see one of you in the next round. Thanks so much and take care.